Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 27th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. It was a beautiful sunny morning with winds that shifted between west and northwest, so I started out by scanning the lake. And the highlight was this bird. We have a large white water bird. This is a swan. And in this photo, we can just make out some pink or orange to the bill because this is a mute swan. And the reason I was so happy to see it is that a couple days ago, I was at the South Lookout and I saw some large swans fly by, but I never saw the bill. I couldn't be sure. I figured they were probably mute swans, but they could have also been trumpeter swans, so I just wasn't sure, so I had to leave it off my list. So it was nice to clean that up and get mute swan for the season today. We had an all-star team of hawk watchers today. Here we have three Derby Hill counters. On the left in the orange hat, of course, is me. In the middle, we have Dave Wheeler, who counted for a couple seasons and has been around Derby Hill for a couple decades. So he's been a big help in getting me up to speed this season. And then on the right, we have Brandon Brogel, who was the counter the previous three seasons. And Brandon came up with David Barber and the Hawk Mountain trainees. So they were visiting, they do a yearly trip to Derby Hill just to get the experience of visiting a hawk watch that gets a, a big spring migration since Hawk Mountain only has a small migration in the spring with their main migration occurring in the fall down there in Pennsylvania. We stayed at the North Lookout for the morning, and unfortunately, it wasn't the best flight. We did have a few hundred turkey vultures. Here we have one example. But other than that, the flight was really hit or miss with a lot of scattered birds and a lot of them high and difficult to spot against the blue sky. Here's a raptor that did give us a decent look, though. We see a long tail on this bird and long, somewhat pointed wings, and we see a lot of streaking to the upper breast. This is an adult female northern harrier. Here we have a blue and white water bird with a long bill. This is a belted kingfisher. Here we have a budio where we see a belly band and dark patagial bars, making this a red-tailed hawk. And we see no bold dark trailing edge to the wing and kind of a brownish banded tail because this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here we have an eagle. We see a fairly large head and a lot of white, especially in this wing pit area. This is an immature bald eagle. Here we have another hawk with a belly band and dark patagial bars. This is another red-tailed hawk, but this one's an adult. We see that dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail. From the North Lookout, I had a total of 50 species today. In the afternoon, it became clear that the southerly wind shift we were hoping for wasn't going to happen, and by 1.30, the lake breeze had really kicked in harder with a shift to a stronger northwest wind, so I made the decision to move over to the south lookout, got set up there around 1.45, and that's where we stayed the rest of the day, and it was really like a whole different day because we ended up getting a really nice big flight from the south lookout. It was nice to have some clouds moving in and also a lot of eyes scanning the sky. Here we have a Budio. We see that this bird is orange underneath with black and white patterning to the wings and tail. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings that was facing into the wind and flapping while it hovered in place. This is a male American kestrel, and this bird's a little bit unique, and let's look at the tail pattern. Normally on a male American kestrel, only the outermost tail feathers will be banded, and the rest will be orange with a black tip. But we see on this bird, the outer four feathers on each side are banded, and it's only a few central tail feathers that have that orange and then the black tip. So this is just a variation of the tail pattern that is less common than the standard tail pattern. It's something I've seen occasionally while hawk watching, but it's always something interesting to note. Here we have an eagle high overhead, and we see a lot of white to the underside of the body and in the wing pit area. This is an immature bald eagle. Here we have a large bird and we see long trailing legs and we see a long neck that's held out straight rather than curved into an S. And overall it's grayish brown. This is a sandhill crane. And as the afternoon went on, we developed a really nice flight of turkey vultures with the groups getting larger and larger. While following a group of turkey vultures, I spotted this reaper drone in the background. Here we have an eagle with a white head and a white tail. This is an adult bald eagle. Here we have another eagle high overhead. Even though the head's turned, we get the sense that it's a somewhat smaller head and we can see that golden back of the neck, also known as the nape. And we can see white patches 
in the centers of the wings and also at the base of the tail, making this an immature golden eagle. And it's interesting to see the way that these white patches are divided by some dark feathers that have already been replaced. And when this bird turned and showed the top side, it showed a tawny bar, which indicates that the bird is not a juvenile. So that's how we're able to age it as a sub-adult rather than a first year golden eagle. Here's a hawk shaped like a flying cross with long wings held out mostly straight. We can see that head sticks out quite a bit past the wrists, which are pushed forward. And looking at the tail, we can just make out that those outer tail feathers, which tuck underneath are shorter than the central ones. This is an adult Cooper's hawk. And we know the age is adult because of the orange barring underneath. Here we have a Budio. We see a dark belly band and we have faint patagial bars. This is a red tailed hawk and it's an adult because of the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail. And the turkey vultures just kept coming and coming and a lot of them were giving us a really nice look. So it was really nice to have such a good flight for the Hawk Mountain trainees since they drove five hours to get here. We were all watching a male northern harrier and suddenly it swooped down towards the ground and began flushing birds and someone said it flushed a kill deer. And my first thought was, well, maybe it'll flush some snipe. But before I could say anything, Brandon called out that he had five snipe flying. So they flew back and forth for about a minute or two trying to figure out what to do. And I think they eventually settled back down. But nice to see some more Wilson snipes. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings. So we should be thinking small falcon. And overall, it's light in color underneath, which makes it an American kestrel. And with the streaking on the breast, that makes it a female American kestrel. Here we have a raptor hunting low to the ground. It has a long tail and wings that are held up into a V shape. And we can see an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier and the streaking to the upper breast make this an adult female. Here we have a perched pair of American kestrels. To the upper right, we have the male. We can see the orange back and blue on the wings. And to the bottom left, we have the female, which looks more brownish overall. At the end of the day, I had these two ducks mixed in with some mallards. We see very long, skinny necks. We can see a very long, skinny tail and thin pointed wings. These are northern pintails. By six o'clock, the flight had seemed to settle down and everyone else left. So I was just left alone with my thoughts, thinking that the day was probably done. But between six and 6.30, I had some large groups of turkey vultures continue to migrate past at essentially treetop level. So that was really cool to see these final birds coming through at the end of the day. And between six and 6.30, I had over a hundred turkey vultures come through. So I'm glad I stayed that extra little bit. From the South Lookout, I had 38 species. In total for the day, I had 57 species. The only new species for the season today was mute swan, bringing us to a total of 95 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 1,782 turkey vultures, 10 bald eagles, 4 northern harriers, 5 sharp-shinned hawks and 7 cooper's hawks, 5 red-shouldered hawks, 47 red-tailed hawks, we had 2 golden eagles and 2 American kestrels for a total of 1,864 migrating raptors. That brings us to a total of 13,366 migrating raptors, which is already the third highest March ever. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with a high in the mid 40s and light northerly winds. We'll be at the south lookout, and I wouldn't be too surprised if once the flight gets going tomorrow that it turns into a decent day. Now with the light winds and cloudy conditions, it might take a while for the raptors to get moving, but I think there's a lot of turkey vultures still in the pipeline, so I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with a half decent day from the south lookout tomorrow. For Saturday, we're looking at showers early, becoming a steady light rain later on with the high in the low 40s and north-northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so not looking very good for Saturday. And for Sunday, more rain likely with the high in the low 50s, winds east-southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so it's really not a bad wind, it's just that the rain will probably prevent much of a raptor flight, but we'll keep an eye on it in case they take that rain out. All right, another fun day of hawk watching at Derby Hill. The morning was a lot of fun with a lot of people coming out to socialize, especially with former counter Brandon Brogel coming to visit and getting to meet all of the Hawk Mountain trainees. Although it was starting to sweat a little bit with how slow the flight was. But once we made that switch to the South Lookout, 
and the turkey vulture flight really picked up. It really turned into a spectacular afternoon flight there at the South Lookout, and we'll look forward to more good flights coming up soon, hopefully, once we get past some rainy days. So hope to see you out soon at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.